First World Order Radio, finally, finally, we are on the air. No doubt. All right, all right. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. Begin on into some of that order consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Seen in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. Proceed in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, get your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intention straight out. All right, so, I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient mystery school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories and shit that works. You have an activated pipe in which that produced this black chemical called melanin. We, what we did was gave a hard line in the sand between the different definitions of esoteric study and exoteric study. Playtime is over. Greetings, peace. Back again with Dr. Aileen Bay, host of First World Radio, FWO. Also, I have my co-host, Brother Fahim L. Are you here, brother? Uh-huh, I tell you, Washington East. Hey, I tell you, Washington East, Jack. How you doing tonight? Doing well, God. How you doing? Doing good, doing good. All right, All we're right. going to get into esoteric symbolism and magical concepts. This God is this Aborisha. You definitely want to check it out. If you look on this profile, you will actually see um, a good bit of information. So I'm definitely a supporter, and I'm getting ready to bring on now. Abarisha, are you here? Yes, divine peace and blessings. Peace. How you doing tonight? I'm doing good. How are you? How are you, brothers? Doing, doing well. Well, well goddess. Ready, well, well. Ready, ready, ready to get it started. You're dealing okay. with the esoteric symbolism and those magical concepts. What you got for us tonight? Uh, well, basically, I'm going to work with uh, color therapy. Yeah. Um, also, mm. want to deal with uh, magical concepts, dealing with colors. Um, a lot of people aren't familiar with color therapy. Some people right. consider it, uh, you know, ancient or non-valid. So I, I just want to shed some light on it because it does heal. It does work no matter what. Europeans say, and I think this is something that would greatly benefit our people. Um, so that's what I'm going to do tonight, along with some, you know, little magical concepts pertaining to the color of the candles, your zodiac candles, things of that nature. So I'll just tap on that. All right. All right. That sounds good. I'm, I'm sure the audience is ready to, to get into it. Let me open up the chat room so everybody can get on in there. And um. Uh, we be ready to begin, goddess. All right. 
Well, before okay. we started, let's go into a little bit of a uh, background on you and your research and your study, and that way then bring everybody up to a breast of who you are. Okay. Well, my name is Avaricia Ifatumasi Renans. Um, I've been in Philadelphia all of my life. How I got my name, I came into this uh, think tank back in 2007. I started off with finding the history of our global people. You know, uh, Dr. Clark, uh, Dr. Yosef Ben Yakanan, Dr. Ivan Van Sertema, um, Dr. Joel Pukram, all of the greats that most of us in the community already are aware of uh, taught me our history. Um, along with uh, the Moorish Science Temple of America, um, also, well, I had a lot of curiosities, okay, um, which took me back to pre-colonial black Africa, uh, Kemet, ancient Asia, ancient South and North American cultures, matriarchal societies of the world, not just mm -hmm. Africa, but the entire globe, occult right. studies, you know, and basically, the matriarchal societies, a lot of times, they are misinterpreted. Mm -hmm. um, it is just uh, odd for many of us to fathom um, women being considered goddess um, because of the subjugation of women. But when you go into the history of our people, you'll find that the woman and the man stood side by side. And uh, these matriarchal societies were labeled, well, these societies were labeled then matriarchal because they acknowledged the presence of the woman and what uh, her gifts actually are. Um, I'm just, you know, in constant pursuit of healing, you know, all types of uh, ailments and, and even daily ailments and situations that our family group and relatives and even myself are plagued with in these societies run by Europeans. Um, so it was basically in this group that I came across the mysteries of our ancestors, which are still right. alive and, and pretty much thriving today. And uh, just to name a few, um, Ifa, uh, I've been, uh, you know, indulged in Ifa, both eclectic and traditional. Uh, the different Palo Mayambes, and of course, our heavenly parents, um, Aser and Aset, uh, recognizing Obatala and Yemeya, Mama Kaluga, Mama Chola, our supreme being, no matter which religion or whatever we decide to call the supreme being, I've come to know as Alo Dumare. Uh, I've also studied the priestesses of Mamawata and quite a few other mysteries. Um, my godfather gave me the title Aberisha. Norisha is a minor god. So that that title, Aberisha, means student of the minor gods. Mm. My Ulohu gave me the title mm. Ifatumasi. That means if I make me good. Um, Mfundishi Hudums, he wrote one of my favorite books that I came across in the very beginning of my journey um, back in 2007. That's where I got the name Netchard, Renant. Uh, this is a goddess of good fortune, nourishment, and healing. And last but not least, my first name originally is Colise. And this name was given to me by my Nana. And she's a woman that I consider mystical because she has a really fine niche um, of finding lost people. You know, she made it her business to get to know everyone. She was, she's one of those women that people would consider nosy. But if you ever came to her and said, you know, I was adopted when I was younger and I want to find my birth parents, she could find them. Hmm. And I think it was, you know, because of the fact that she had uh, 
connection with people. And she was the type of woman that would ask questions like, uh, where is your grandparents from? You know, something we don't normally do today when we we sit down with people that we've just met and, you know, things of that nature, that old school stuff. Mm-hmm. And um, so she, she pretty much knew her way around down mm-hmm. south. And um, that's where her roots are. That's where my roots are uh, in the South and North Carolinas, Virginia as well. And so most people in Philadelphia have their roots in those states. So because our family was so large, she was able to reach out and find lost family members. Um, I'm really feministic. And I, I've learned to embrace this word, even though it comes with a harsh title. Um, it has nothing to do with rejecting masculinity in my um, in my way of things. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> right. I'm feministic in, in my essence and the fact that I'm a woman, and I think as a woman first. And so I consider myself feministic. Um I'm a reader of the Akashic Records. Uh, I'm an expert in tarot and oracle decks. I'm a natural empath and a cognitive, uh, precognitive dreamer. Right now I'm developing uh, clairvoyant and medium skills. And I have good knowledge in numerology. I also use the Bible to... Divine, I can use books to divine with. <laughs> I can use a deck of playing cards to, as like a form of a tarot to divine with. Uh, I use the Obiabata and also runes. And I like magic of both light and dark fre- frequencies, so I've pretty much been involved in everything. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay, so that's enough about me. I think I covered everything. <laughs> right. Okay. So let's get into the colors therapy and why are the colors important and how do they uh, relate or interact with um, individuals or our chakra system or endocrine gland system. Um, mm-hmm. You know, let's get more deep into that information. Sure. Okay, so we're going to start off with the color black. Um, And black is basically that darkness. Okay, this is that grounding color. It's the color where creation begins. It's the place where you seek wisdom in the darkness. Um, That's where the learning starts. Black is also a color for protection. Um. Black also is that color that <clears throat> some people like to wear in movie theaters in order to appear as a as a tough guy. <laughs> That's mm-hmm. how important black is. It it makes people feel safe. Black can be used in candle magic for reversing and uncrossing, unhexing. Black candles can also be used to repel. It can be used to banish negativity. Um, It can be used to release stress, negative thoughts and feelings. Um, It can be used to release headaches that can be caused by negative thinking about yourself. Um, Black is a color that deals with shape-shifting. And... It's also a defense color. Um, Most people who, you know, have studied martial arts get that black belt. Okay. Um, If anyone is familiar with scrying, uh, scrying is that black mirror. Okay. Uh, Black pride, which is one of my favorites, uh, because that's something that we definitely have to have is pride and and who we are, regardless of what we may consider ourselves or what people know us today as and what the majority of us may have started off calling ourselves black. You have to have pride in, 
and that melanin. Okay, so black is also that color that allows you to perform multiple tasks with more ease and focus. So a person can become more productive. You can break an undesirable habit with the color black or with the onyx stone, which is a stone that works great with grounding you whenever you feel spacey or overwhelmed, um, if you're pulled in way too many directions. You know, a person that multitasks in a home or at work has this problem with being grounded. So having an onyx bracelet or an onyx necklace uh, will basically ground your energy. Black gives you energy, and it gives you a rush and adrenaline to get things going. And as you, you know, if you're paying attention to the media, you know, that melatonin is so important to people right now because they're not getting sleep. Um, that melanin, that darkness, that carbon, all of that, regardless, you know, it's necessary. So one of the things that I always urge to new beginners and the arts of uh, magic is, or just, you know, coming to know thyself is to be able to sit in the dark with no light at all. And if a person is afraid of dark, you have to face your fears. So you would take your time, take little baby steps, sit in the dark for five minutes, turn on the light. The next day, sit in the dark another five minutes, turn on the light. The third day, sit in the dark for ten minutes, try and increase your ability to adapt to a dark atmosphere until you're able to sit peacefully and focus or not focus at all, but to allow, allow your your mind to basically show you things, pictures, movies, symbols, okay? Um, I love talking about the black crow, which is one of my favorite birds. Okay, the black crow, the story of this black crow um, is really fascinating to me because this is a bird that is considered female, and she's fascinated with her own shadow. Okay, and if, you know, you ever heard any stories from back in the day, you know, if you were to look at a crow for too long, it'll steal your soul. Well, that was a bit adjusted. It's not necessarily true. It's not true at all, actually. But this crow, you know, she kept looking at it and scratching at her shadow and pecking at it until her shadow woke up and became alive. Then the crow's shadow ate her. The crow is dead. It's a dead crow now. So the dead crow is the left-handed guardian. Mm -hmm. And if you, leak, if you look deeply into a crow's eye, you will have found the gateway to the supernatural. Crows are... Uh, acknowledged in my family, even the raven as well, because it's also a black bird um, and it's part of the crow family, um, are known for flying in our house to let us know when a relative is ascending. And so this was, you know, a symbol for us that someone was going to pass away. So within 24 to 48 hours, if not two hours Later, after finding a dead crow in our house, we would get this phone call to let us know that a relative passed away. So the crow knows the unknowable mysteries, okay? And it is the keeper of sacred law. So co uh, the crow can be the one that bends the law of the physical universe and shapeshift it at the same time. And this ability is rare and unique for the birds. Only the crow has this has this ability. The next color I'm going to deal with is the color blue. The color blue deals with the throat chakra. That is the place of communication and willpower. I don't know what happened. Brother Fahim, can you oh. hear me? 
Mm-hmm. Loud and clear. Okay. Can you hear me? No, loud and clear. Okay. Brother, uh, Dr. Arlene Bay, can you hear me? Okay, I think we lost him. Oh, Dr. Arlene? Yes. Oh. Uh, sure did. Yep, he's dropped. Okay, I guess you keep on going. Uh, okay, well, I'll keep going. Okay. Um, let's see. So, you know, blue deals with throat chakra. Um, and magic, it deals with good luck. It deals with truth. Uh, it deals with patience. It deals with domestic harmony as well. You can get organized with the color blue in your home or at your workplace. Uh, Blue is very inspirational. Uh, Blue is a color that's used by politicians to promote sincerity. Uh, Blue is a water element. Blue is also the color of occult wisdom and devotion. It deals with expressing your true will and walking what you talk and being compassionate due to empathy if you're gifted with this and the chakra uh, this light works with is like the ears. If you have ear infections, I'll also tell you some other colors. But I'm going to finish with this blue and tell you a little more about blue. Okay. Blue, violet, and indigo, their rays have traces of calcium, aluminum, and hydrogen. And what our ancestors used to do when they studied chromotherapy and actually developed a healing process for the people at that time was that they created color halls where they would use glass or crystals with these different colors, violet, indigo, blue, green, yellow, orange, red, which are the same colors of our chakras. Uh, They also had colored bottles where you could actually, you know, sit these bottles with some oil, let's say, for instance, coconut oil. And, uh, you know, let's say, for instance, uh, you have a person with breathing problems, you have some honey, you will put this in a white jar or a white glass with a lid that you can cover it with in the sun for 25 to 30 days to treat a person with breathing problems such as asthma, emphysema, you know, anything, uh, bronchiolitis, anything affecting the lungs. Um, So there's a lot of studies uh, surrounding chromotherapy. Uh, Let's see. It It also works with the teeth and gums, this color blue, when used in... Uh, See, because color therapy is a concentration of light, and you know that our bodies are made of light. Um, The sun emits these colors, Uh, the violet, the blue, the indigo, the green, yellow, orange, and red. That's why after, after it rains, we see that rainbow. That rainbow is caused by... Uh, transparency from the sun's rays, you know, hitting the water and pretty much like uh, ricocheting ricocheting Mm -hmm. the light back. So it's like it exposes the lights within the rays of the sun after a rainstorm. So you get the rainbow. But there are also other colors that we're not able to see. Um, Those are called odalic But um, the color brown is the next color I wanted to talk about. It works also with the throat chakra. Uh, This is also a color that we see outside of us that is also a part of us. Um, Magically, you would use the color brown for house blessings. Uh, You can use this to train or or tame your pets using a, a brown stick. Uh, Brown is also used for earth magic. 
Uh, you can wear a brown wrap on your head for concentration. Hmm. Or you can put coconut oil in a brown glass, sit it in the sun for about 15 days, covered at night, and tap the forehead with the oil for extra concentration. Um, this is a color candle that you can work towards material goods and stability, you know, locating lost objects. You can use that candle. I'll get into that in a minute. Mm -hmm. um, this is also a candle that you can use to gain real estate, uh, to see a successful construction of, uh, you know, a building um, that your company may be, you know, working on. This is also a food blessing candle color. Um, this is the color candle you would use <clears throat> for a financial crisis. Um, brown helps people to get organized, uh, categorized so that you may ask yourself the right questions in the order to obtain information or wisdom. Mm -hmm. So if a person is, like, attracted to this color, it says that, you know, you need some organization in your life because you're a bit, uh, you know, oppressed. Mm. Okay. Okay. So it's like saying someone's trying to force you to live your life their way. That's basically what oppression is. Mm -hmm. So it's a great color to wear, you know, on your head to promote concentration and to promote focus so that you can hear yourself, your true will. Um. So, I'll go ahead and do you have any questions before I go on to the next one? Because it was something I wanted to pull up here. Yeah, um, I was uh, thinking about this, uh, the saying about the color brown. Mm -hmm. And you were saying that uh, if you're attracted to the color brown, that you are, means that you uh, don't, will not really have no real control of, of your life, mm -hmm. uh, so to speak, you know. Now, that's interesting because I haven't heard that before, but I'm always mm -hmm. learning something every day. So, yeah, I'm going to keep okay. them that in mind, you know, because I am kind of, well, I, I, I pretty pretty much make my own decisions pretty much for a long time, but I am attracted to the color brown somewhat, you know, mm -hmm. but I'm mostly uh, attracted to the color blue for some reason. Okay. And it's interesting color... that, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Well, if brown is your color, what's I'll get into that later. I'll ask you later. Uh, okay. But if brown is your color, um, and you wear it all the time, uh, most of the time I, maybe I you feel like you're not. See now the oracle in me is coming out. You're feeling like you're not living up to your fullest. Okay. There's something it is you want to do that you're not doing, and the only thing holding you back is you agreeing to. Uh, objections from other people. Okay. okay. Yeah, but blue blue is mostly my favorite color. What I was going okay. to say, really say, blue is my favorite color. Uh, uh, like I'm attracted to brown somewhat, you know, mm -hmm. somewhat. That means you're a forgiving person. Okay. And that's awesome. Okay, okay. thank Okay, you. you're welcome. All right, so gold is a masculine color. It represents the sun and when scientists actually had a shot of the uh, pineal gland, um, a functioning pineal gland, it emanated the gold rays, which is the same color as the sun. And uh, if you're familiar with Kemet, they show the sun uh, with the rays coming down, you know, onto, you know, Akhenaten and his family, like hands, okay? And so these rays within the brain emitting from the pineal gland pretty much is like that touching effect. And gold also um, is that color that uh, has all of the rays of light within it, just like the sun has the red, orange, the violet, the yellow, the purple, uh, the green. It has blue Gold encompasses all of those colors. So gold 
is that energy as well. It's a positive attitude. It represents justice. It's an attraction color, you know. Um, it's the color that represents luxury, okay. Um, it's a good color candle to use during solar eclipse rituals, um, paying homage to the ancestor also, uh, balancing the masculine principle within, you know, the mind's hemisphere. Um, so gold is that color that also, you know, it resonates with all of the colors in the chakra, just as the color black does. Hmm. Okay. Sure. Green. Okay. Green represents prosperity. This deals with uh, money, physical and emotional healing, growth and good luck. Um, it's one of those colors that it's, in fact, you have allergies. You would look for green foods to basically heal you mm. uh, like from green. these allergies. Mm-hmm. Yeah, green is one of, my, one of my other favorites, green. I wear a lot of okay. green a lot. Uh-huh. Green is a good color to wear because it helps you to stay energized. Mm-hmm. Um, it also is a color that brings um, healthy attitude having people to you as well. So... <laughs> It's a good color to wear. Okay. All right. Um, Let's see. I wanted to have a sip of some water because my throat is really dry. I have some dry heat over here. Okay. (laughs) I don't know where Brother Aileen went, but he is like disappeared, and I'm sitting here like, uh oh. Yeah, (laughs) something wrong with the. uh... No, someone wrong, I guess. It's all right. I'm yeah. back on. I got Oh, he's back. I okay, got okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm here. Okay. I'm here. Yeah, okay. I'm just letting you do your thing. That's all. Okay. <laughs> I got I'm nervous a bit. I was like, wait, possible. where did the brother go? <laughs> 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 yeah. All right. Well, green is that governor of the heart chakra. Okay. Okay. So this one, you know, it balances love and self-control. Um just to give you a little insight on, <clears throat> I'm sorry, when I get nervous, my voice gets shaky. <laughs> oh, okay. You're doing well. Okay. You're doing well. Okay. Um, it's basically, uh, <clears throat> one second. Uh, if you wear green a lot, people will envy you. Hmm. Definitely, you know, and you'll be able to notice the jealousy in other people Wow! when you wear that color. Wow. Green is also a good color for weight loss. Just wearing the color green, rather it's, um, if you have green curtains, green bed sheets, green slippers, having the color green around you promotes weight loss. And this, you know, better goes to show, you know, how chromotherapy comes into play as far as how colors affect us mentally, physically, you know. Um, the, sci- the, the science on colors and how it's used to manipulate as well, um, how it's used to promote is really heavy. I'll get into that in a minute. I have everything, like, I didn't write this out, and I have everything um, typed up, so y'all got to work with me. <laughs> well, we work with you, up. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, so that color green is really powerful. Um, this deals with heart diseases. Um, so using the color green, <clears throat> they have these LED lights. Um, It comes with a remote control. You would just go into a dark room uh, with a lamp or a ceiling light, plug in this, you know, this bulb and adjust it, you know, uh, to the color that you need the most if a person is suffering with heart disease or diseases of the immune system. Um, Let's see, fatigue or uh, allergies, uh, breast cancer, you know, things of this nature, 
um, if a person has a problem with not being compassionate, if they're non-compassionate or non-sympathetic, if they are having a hard time adapting or um, they don't feel as if they have understanding of the things taking place in their life or if they are having problems with Mm -hmm. self-control. Green is that color that you would use to promote health and wellness. Um, And it actually does heal the body. The body is able to heal itself. Um, Dr. Babbitt, uh, Hewitt Dwight Babbitt, actually wrote a book on the cures that he was able to perform uh, back in 1871 or so uh, pertaining to chromotherapy. And um, he used a lot of red and red and blue. Mm-hmm. But green is also a color that uh, we use for healing. Mm. That's, that's okay. interesting because uh, I'm going to cut you off. But that's interesting because I even have a pair, a couple of pair of green socks. Mm-hmm. Uh, matter of fact, I've got a pair of green socks on now. Uh, I have a lot, okay. bunch of green shirts that I wear. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> green uh, pants, or whatever trousers, whatever. Mm-hmm. I wear a lot of those. So I, I, that's 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 pretty okay. That's, that's pretty interesting. Wow. Now, that's deep. Now, I have green socks and I have green shirt, but I can't say that green is the color that people actually put in their their wardrobe like that, but should. And so I have to, you know, give you props for, you know, exploring that color because it it creates balance in your life and and promotes healing as well as the other colors. But certain colors have, um, you know, if your, your body basically talks to you, And it just sounds like, you know, you're paying attention to what your body needs. Mm -hmm. And um, that's beautiful. So, (laughs) yeah, that that. (laughs) That is beautiful. (laughs) Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so I wanted to get into the color indigo. Okay, so that one is the the most powerful um, third eye stimulator. Okay, It, it basically opens you up to you know, past life vision, spiritual guidance, your psychic abilities. Um, If you use this color as a candle, you can stop people from telling lies about you, gossiping. Mm -hmm. Um, You can work on if if a person has lost their dignity and wants to regain it back, indigo is the color candle they would use to regain their lost dignities. Um, Indigo is a good candle to light, and it's the color candle that I use whenever I'm working with uh, with clients, you know, during my 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 divination sessions. Um, Indigo is a color for ambition, and it's a great color to overcome depression. Mm. Really great color to overcome depression. Um, It's a color that can be used to communicate with the deceased. You know, um, Mm -hmm. if you burn it with a silver candle, you can definitely make contact. If someone in the listening audience is experienced or or would like to try because that's where they're drawn to right now, they really want to speak to someone, I would recommend a silver candle and an indigo candle. And just meditate, focus. And allow your mind to just wander, and it'll happen for you. You'll be surprised. Mm. Um, I want to get to indigo foods, okay, because there are a lot of foods that um, this light works with that they, a lot of people don't know how the sun feeds the food, and because the sun's rays are made of the colors of the chakras, these foods absorb the light and the rays from the different colors and uh, the the health benefits of choosing a right diet, um, color-based diet. Um, So indigo is still one of those colors, like if you have, uh, let's see, grapes, 
even red grapes, um, the bigger the better, as long as they're organic uh, blueberries, um, eggplants. Uh, these are foods that are high in calcium and also hydrogen, which is good for the body. Um, when it comes to color therapy, uh, this is a color that you pretty much would use to, it's not too many people that would make an indigo bottle these days. Mm. Um, there is some, let's see if I can find, they have these bottles. I'll post this stuff on my Facebook page because I'm going to create a note that explains how to um, solarize your water using different colors and just using, you know, we should drink our water room temperature anyway. But if you solarize your water by putting them in different colored jars, such as, you know, the color of our chakras, the red, the green, the blue, indigo, um, the yellow, the red, if you use all of those colored jars and you solarize your honey, your water, your oil, you'll be able to get healing from that as well. So chromotherapy wasn't just about um, it wasn't just about light bulbs like we have to use today. Um, like I said back in Kemet, they had uh, they were able to use crystals. Um, they were creating different color glass uh, that they would actually massage a person with these rays of light to promote healing. So I'll get into that in a minute. I know I have a lot of stuff here. Um, I want to get into the difference of the color black and the color white because I know there is some confusion um, because of the black and white uh, teachings we've had, mm -hmm. you know, being a being in in this country, having been educated by them, we don't see see white is a color that repels and it goes right through you, and it doesn't emit all of the colors or the color spectrum that the light from the the energy from the sun um it doesn't emit all of those colors through the body, so white is a color like if you wear the color white, for instance. Mm -hmm. Um, even with being a melanated person, white will cause the colors from the sun to go through your body, but it will not emit all of the light. Like it may emit red. It may uh, allow you to, it may allow red to go through you. It may allow violet to go through you, but it might not allow green to go through you. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. white is choosy and picky of the colors that it allows the body to absorb or to uh, go through. Whereas though wearing the color black um, actually helps you to absorb every spectrum of light that the sun emits in its rays. So black is a great color to wear. I forgot to mention that. Um, okay. Because if you notice, if you have white curtains in your window, uh, when you touch the curtains in the summertime or if it's hot where you live at most of the time or warm or whatever, you won't really feel that heat in the white curtains. But in black curtains, you'll feel the warmth. Or any darker color curtain, you'll feel the warmth because it holds more rays. It absorbs it. Mm -hmm. And so white is... They consider it to be a purity because it doesn't mix. It doesn't mix too well with uh, with other colors. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and that's symbolic in itself. And it's saying, <laughs> you know, white is a bit picky. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and we wonder sometimes why they're, you know, um, one way with certain people, you know, if you're brown, you're okay. If you're, you know, they don't want to deal with the dark, you know, <laughs> they're, the color white itself is, is prejudice. 
Okay. So <laughs> that was just something I wanted to throw out there. I thought it was funny, actually. Okay. <laughs> okay, so the color um, lavender, it's the color of knowledge and intuition. Um, I find myself working with this herb a lot. Um, I make pound cakes with lavender. I make uh, teas with pure lavender. Um, I in, I definitely enjoy lavender bud soaps that I make my own self and the essential oils as well, the absolutes, all of that stuff. Lavender is just like that beautiful, beautiful smelling color. Um, it's, <laughs> mm-hmm. it's just it's beautiful. And this is something that, you know, if you're expecting a guest at your home that you don't really like uh, – get along with or they give you bad vibes or whatever have you, if you put some lavender buds in whatever drink you plan on serving, you know, like a tea, or um, if you put a lavender plant in your living room, it will protect you from, you know, their their vibes. Mm. It will calm, it will definitely calm them down. Because this is an herb that, you know, promotes friendship. And mostly with like-minded people. And if this person that you're having a problem with um, smells the lavender or see that you have lavender uh, in your home, you know, as part of the color scheme of your home, that will transform their idea of you and they'll be a little more cordial with you. Not that we want to invite people in our homes that, you know, we don't get along with, but sometimes it just happens, whether it's family, friends, or whatever have you. So lavender is that color of happiness, and it's also an indigo color, um, along with the blues. These are uh, what we would call, you know, the different indigos, okay? Uh, This is a color that promotes love and peace and Uh, purification as well you know this is a color that whenever I'm not sure of what to wear I throw on lavender because wearing something lavender um, you know attracts people to me and it makes me feel comfortable because they're friendly towards me and a lot of uh, you know elderly people love and flock to this color and now I know why so Whenever you're indecisive about, you know, anything in your life emotionally, if you have a lavender pillowcase, a lavender blanket, lavender sheets, lavender curtains, a lavender candle, you know, spark the candle, change your sheets, change your pillowcase, you know, grab that robe that's lavender and heal yourself naturally with this color. Um, this color also helps you to deal with burning off, you know, karma from your past lives. And it can help you with dream interpretation. So what I would do when trying to interpret a dream that I'm not sure of or not ready to yet face the idea what this dream is telling me is I would imagine, imagine lavender right in the tip of my forehead, And then, you know, just let it sit there for a little bit until I'm comfortable to accept whatever this dream is telling me, and it'll open itself up. Okay, so let's go to the light blue or the baby blue, which is a spirituality color. It's a color of tranquility, peace, protection. Um... I feel like I'm kind of going into these colors a lot, and I'm not really touching on the chromotherapy, so I'm going to switch up right now. Okay. Because I have a lot of stuff here. (laughs) Y'all don't mind. I'm going to. It's all right. You got two hours. You have two hours. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) All right. So that's good. That's good. A lot of people, well, a lot of people get these blues, these indigos, and all of that confused. You know, they don't know which one is what. 
But um, just to go back to, you know, blue for a minute, blue is that, I'm not talking about the baby blue or the light blue, but the darker color blue, it's a cooling, you know, effect. It has a cooling effect. It's used a lot with chromotherapy for healing. Um, this is the color of electricity, you know. Um, right. It helps, you know, with bleeding. If a person has a disease where they're not able to uh, clot fast enough to prevent, you know, bleeding out, um, they would use the color blue to help assist with the clotting. Um, blue is a color that decreases fevers whenever you use, like, an LED light or whatever have you. Um, it can definitely help with that. It helps as well with sore throats. Um, so blue can have a sedative effect as well. And that's why people say, like, you know, I'm feeling blue, things of that right. nature. Um, but it's a very positive color, you know. It's a color that indicates loyalty and reliability, you know, and um, it's a sentimental color. Um, it stimulates the, the throat chakra. So having light therapy or chromotherapy, um, you'll be working with your throat chakra and if there are any elements of the body that is surrounded around the throat chakra, um, blue would be the color you would use for an LED light. Uh, it's that power center, okay? And that's one of, one of the greatest centers of the body because it's like that expression. And it's important for us to be able to express ourselves, um, what our true will is, and to communicate so that we're understood. And sometimes, you know, if you're a person like myself, I'm a person that rehearse what I do, what I say. Like even if I'm, you know, if I'm having a meeting or if I'm, you know, going to uh, something pertaining to business, you know, I'm a person that will stand in the mirror and rehearse. Now I'm telling you a little bit about myself. <laughs> it's embarrassing. Okay. Okay. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but you know, I want to make sure that no, things are mm-hmm. thorough. Huh? Mm-hmm. The Lord you know, but get through it. Say that again. I said, as long as you can get through it. <laughs> oh yeah, you got it right because you have to have thorough speech. Mm-hmm. And so, right. um, blue, you know on that chakra or in the aura itself, whatever color, you know, the the aura is just the outer body of the chakra system, if I can put it that way. You know, the aura is the same color spectrum of the chakras which are inside of the body. So I don't think I'm saying that right, but (laughs) okay, something like that. Okay. Okay. So... Right. Okay. So, you know, blue is that color that can be used with, you know, any type of speech elements, uh, communication, or like uh, like I spoke before about solarized blue water or solarized blue oil. Um, if you take some coconut oil and you get a blue bottle um, and put that in the sun for at least 20 days, uh, 50, let's say, no, 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 it's 15 to 20 days of solarized water. Um, it's a great tonic for, you know, inflammation of the larynx. Um, if you just tap your, your throat with it, um, it'll help you with communication. So these are little things that, you know, we can do to help strengthen our speech. Okay, so now the color orange, that's that chakra, chakra, and this deals with the uterus. And orange is one of uh, the Orisha's favorite colors, um, Oshun, okay? And she deals with the woman's reproductive system. She also, she also deals with... Um, you know, the lower extremities, uh, the uh, large bowels, 
prostate, the ovaries and testes, things of that nature, all of everything dealing with the reproductive system. And the color orange also deals with that. It also helps in the development of the fetus. Um, so if there is a mother that's having some issues with um, an underdeveloped child while uh, still in the gestation, the uh, still in the phase of pregnancy, you know, you could treat treat this child while still in the womb with the color orange. And this is also a color that can be used for women that have premenstrual syndrome, um, problems with menstrual flow, uh, uterine fi fibroids, ovarian cyst, irritable, uh, bowel, uh, irritable bowel syndrome, endometriosis, even for men, testicular disease or prostate disease. So that color orange is really powerful with healing, you know, those uh, areas. It's a freeing action, you know, upon the body. It relieves repression because orange is that blend of red and yellow, okay? So with it being that blend, it has calcium, magnesium, nitrogen, barium, iron, nickel, aluminum, hydrogen, oxygen, carbon dioxide, sodium, calcium, chromium, titanium. All of them are found in orange. All of that is found in the color red and all of them are found in the color yellow as well. So orange is that color when you need new ideas that you would, you know, focus on the color orange with your eyes closed. It's a stimulator of mental enlightenment, and it's, you know, helpful in dealing with excess, excessive, you know, sexual expression. So there's a right. person that, you know, mm -hmm. because orange deals with the chakra, uh, the sacral chakra, um, you know, sex is part of that chakra. So if anybody needs a fine tune, orange is definitely that color to work with. Um, let's see. I'm going to go to the color pink because this color, a lot of people use this color in, in rituals or, uh, you know, spells for love and compassion. Or it's a very feminine color, but don't be surprised. It's not a color that's basically for women or, you know, um, men who aren't masculine. It's just a color that if you're drawn to it, it's saying that you need some emotional healing. Um, it can be a spiritual healing, or it can be a healing in partnerships. But it deals mainly with a person improving themselves so that they can reach a point of maturity and forgiveness. Because pink is a color that deals with mostly domestic harmony. So it deals with children, it deals with partnerships, relationships, uh, healing of both spiritual and emotional. It deals with maturity and your capacity to forgive. Mm. Mm -hmm. All right. Yep. So my next color is the color purple. Now notice purple, violet, mm. blue, they're still not the same, but they're the same. And purple is a color that deals with wisdom and influence, spiritual power. Um, again, you can contact, make contact with spirits with the color purple. You can drive away evil with the color purple. Purple is a very deep, rich color. Um, so black and, and purple during certain rituals can be uh, interchangeable. 
You can change your luck with the color purple. You can gain dominance with the color purple. Purple. Uh, you can gain your well, gaining com, uh, confidence or dominance is the same as uh, independence. You can win your independence with this color purple. Um, it, wow. That's kind of funny that I said that because the color purple is also a movie. Mm-hmm. And here that you mean? have in this movie, huh? Said indeed. I'm, yeah. The color purple, you have, um, you know, this movie with Whoopi Goldberg and Oprah Winfrey and mm-hmm. uh, what's his name? Danny Glover. And um, everyone's trying to get free from something. Rather, it's free from daddy or free from mister. Right. Or, you know, free from the white man's, you know, uh, the white man's and his woman's uh, oppression. Mm-hmm. So this is, you know, a movie that represented independence. That's deep. I just put that, I just, wow, bam, see, dealing with the purple. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah. Cody. I'm silly. Cody. Cody. Yeah. <laughs> so it's yeah, symbolic so. to the movie, Mhm. It's really symbolic. Really symbolic. Um, when it when it deals with, now stress, when a person is unable to fight for their independence, they become paralyzed. Rather, it's uh, not necessarily paralyzed, where as though you can't move or can't walk, but they become complacent with being a hermit, or they become, uh, you know. Uh, What's the other word for them? Recluse. And um, diseases such as multiple sclerosis, um, epilepsy because of the fear, um, dizziness because of the ungroundedness of having no independence, of uh, not being able to drive away, you know, that which uh, may be may appear to be evil to you. Um which that which is dominating over you, these are diseases that set in when, in fact, you're oppressed or being dominated and controlled. Parkinson's disease, schizophrenia, senile dementia. And dementia is basically forgetting. And what happens is that, you know, um, Sometimes when a person tucks something away and they actually forget what it is they're dealing with, it starts to spread over the brain into other areas of their life. If I'm making sense, I'm trying to make this non so not so but it starts to spread and takes bits and pieces or chunks out of your life that a person can, you know, um, regress back to uh, childlike. Um, they may become combative because they're not understanding why they can't remember uh, this face and that person, but they know their name, you know? Right. So <clears throat> these are diseases that's caused by not having that independence or uh, being dominated over. Alzheimer's is another one. Okay. Uh, red. Now, red... I think, did I? No, I didn't. Okay, so red is that great energizer color. Mm-hmm. Um, it's like the father of vitality. You know, it's a warm color. Um, it's a heating color. It loosens up and unclogs. Um, it releases stiffness and constrictions in the body, and it's excellent for areas that have become stiffened and restricted, such as, you know, uh, muscular uh, dystrophy or muscular apathy. Um, Red is a color of rage. Um, Yeah. Red is is definitely a color of anger. But when using this color to treat ailments, um, such as like to help with uh, hemoglobin that doesn't multiply, or to increase energy and raising the temperature of the body, or anemia, 
or any other blood-related condition. Red is that color. And if you um, have heard about, what's the name of that? Planet Fitness. Planet Fitness uses a, they use chromotherapy, actually. And I think it's like $10 for each time you go in, even if you have a membership. To go into this light for like 15 minutes, they give you these glasses to put on, and you go in with like a bathing suit or some swim trunks, and it actually helps you to, um, because it, it pulls blood to the surface and it, it basically increases blood flow and all of that good stuff, it helps to heal scars and bruising on the mm -hmm. surface. But it does wonders in the body as well. Okay. And the body. So red is um, a really great color to wear um, to attract because that's what red does. It attracts within the body, and it it, it basically attracts outside of the body. Um, let's see. It works with the kidneys and the bladder. It, it works with the vertebral column, the hips and legs. Uh, it's basically, it's that, it works with that and stimulates the base of the spine. So that's where that, that chakra is, that base chakra. Mm -hmm. So red deals with the adrenal gland. So it'll work with everything with, that deals with the colon. And if you notice, a lot of people that have issues with their colon, they tend to break out. Or their skin, uh, they have all kinds of skin diseases and things of that nature. So when a person with like uh, colitis or even high blood pressure, um, let's see, uh, hypertension or frequent urination, um, being treated with the color red, uh, basically helps um, heal the body. If a person is anemic because they have cold fingers or cold toes all the, all the time, um, the color red is a great color to wear. Um, it also helps to cure Crohn's disease or colitis. I think I said that already. Um, it helps with polyps, constipation, and diarrhea. Okay. Um, with candle work, let me get some water. Okay. So, as I was saying, red is that color for passion, uh, survival. It's also a good color to work for fertility because, because um, the color red works so well with the digestive track, basically when when women suffer from infertility or problems with the uterus, a lot of times doctors don't pay attention to what's going on with the with the uh exit track and they because they're not paying attention to you know what's going on, how many bowel movements you're taking a week or a day. You know, um, these these women have these uh, these issues with their uterus and um, become infertile because of the lack of treatment to their colon or their you know other um, their duodenums or wherever in that digestive tract is not being taken care of. So the color red deals with that as well. If uh, a woman is constipated or if a man is constipated, it definitely helps with that. And men can become impotent as well as women due mm. to constipation because our reproductive system is in the front and the exit system is right in the back. So what's affecting you in the back is going to definitely affect you in the front. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Okay. All right, so now I'm going to deal with the color yellow. Uh, the color yellow, this one balances the solar plexus. 
Um, this deals with the liver, the spleen, um, the stomach. It's a pancreas. Uh, let's see, gallstones, diabetes, all of that. Uh, I would say, uh, let's see, it's those, those nerve endings that definitely need the, the color yellow in order to heal. Um, it helps with stimulation. So it's an excellent color for, like, nerve-related conditions and ailments. Um, if you, people are, you'll be surprised how many people are really just uptight because they're not functioning properly. Hmm. Their body is breaking down. Um, their, you know, their liver may need a cleanse. Uh, their intestines is backed up. Their stomach is in knots. Um, and they just feel ugly because they're breaking out with all kinds of, you know, bumps and everything like that. It's really serious. And people don't feel well if they don't look well. So yellow is the color that a person would use if, in fact, they're having issues with uh, with the smaller intestine, the stomach, the liver, um, things of that nature as well. It's it's really serious, and I, I right. think that um, gold is a good color. If it, I mean. If you can surround, if a person can surround themselves with gold, that's just as well. I think a person could probably find more yellow, even different shades of yellow, to put in their home, you know, um, curtains, sheets, whatever, clothing, um, just to wear to help them pull that light in from the sun if they're not able right. to mm-hmm. purchase those LED lights. Um, because happiness is really important. And I'm sure after they're healed from receiving some sort of light, uh, they'll definitely feel happier Um, because yellow drives negativity away. It's a mental stimulator. Uh, This is also a place of memory and concentration. You can walk into a place um, that you're, you know, possibly doing business and wear a color color yellow and persuade people to see things your way. Um, it's a good color to wear when you're traveling. And also a good color to wear for solar magic. I mean, it's a good color to use for solar, solar magic. Put that over there. So um, I think... I have touched on the colors. I think at this time, okay, well, I wanted to get into the zodiac and how colors can definitely help them with that uh, healing process. Um, Let's start off with Aries. Okay, Tuesday, um, just a tip for the zodiac signs with their colors. Tuesday is a great day to wear red for you. For Taurus, um, Taurus, pink every Friday. For Gemini, green every Wednesday. For Cancer, you can wear white, you can wear sea green or light blue on Mondays. Leo, orange or gold every Sunday. Virgo, a shade of green, any color green on Wednesday. Libra, cream or off-white on Fridays. Scorpio, maroon or deep red every Tuesday. Sagittarius, wear yellow on Thursdays. Capricorn, wear black every Saturday. Aquarius, wear violet or navy blue 
every Saturday, and for Pisces, pale yellow every Thursday. So I wanted to share that information. Um, I also wanted to share some tips on different ways to, um, well, I think I pretty much touched on that. Is there anything else? you Did, did I skip anything? Not that I know of. Okay. <laughs> There's some way else to know something I don't know. <laughs> okay. Well, let's see. I think I pretty much touched on um, the soul of the the importance of uh, solarized or lunar energized water or oils um, because because of the fact that the sun pretty much it it's not the heat from the sun that heals it's the colors that the sun emits that does that does the healing for us um, okay. And the same with the with the moonlight. Okay, the moonlight. Most people who deal with crystals, um, whenever you purchase a crystal, you either, you know, uh, put it in the sun or you put it in the moonlight. Um, these pretty much help to purify. So putting your oils in either or uh, helps to helps to relieve the body. Of different effects um, Moonlight is good for hemorrhaging Fevers uh, Nervous Irritability Lunacy Convulsions uh, Moonlight is definitely good for uh, Stroke victims um, And pretty much That's really I, I mean it's a lot I could <laughs> And I don't want to. I know we don't have much time, so at this time, I think I'll go ahead and and pass it over to uh, you, brothers. <laughs> All right, brother L, you have any questions before we go to the phone line? Um, not at this time. All right, well, let's go to the phone line. And we're gonna go to area code three seven. Area code three four seven. You're Before seven, you're on the air. I don't think they're there. <laughs> yeah. For those that want to call in, call in at 626-414-3535. That's 626-414-3535. Call in. All right. Um, all right, so. Let's see how these colors correlate to the chakra system. Um, you know, we know that you have the endocrine gland system. Would it be wise and important to be able to utilize the colors on your chakras or on your endocrine glands in order to keep them in a harmonious balance? Yes, definitely. And that would be the color orange. Um it definitely, because the endocrine glands deals with the reproductive glands, um, the right. reproductive organs. Um, so definitely the color orange that deals with the sh uh, sacral chakra, um, which is that area right below your lower abdomen, is where you would like to have that light frequency uh, beamed at, not necessarily um, just being in a dark room with that color. Uh, will help you with any um, incontinence or uh, any kind of um, infertility, of uh, rather male or female. Okay, okay. All right, we have a call. Let's go. We have area code 732. Area code 732, you're on the line. Hey, what's going on? Evening, peace, family. How y'all? Peace. I'm good. Uh, I had called in a while ago and spoke about some uh, some old crazy other shit, but uh, I'm gonna let that go tonight. This was an excellent show, sister. Good, good looking. All right, Thank the spirit you. realm. Def spirit realm definitely owe you an applause. So I know a lot of people gonna get their tables and their altars out for you tonight. Good looking. Thank you. But, Thank um, you. 
I'm calling in specifically because you were speaking a lot about the female fertility. My wife has uh, been going through that personally, and yet I'm trying to find out because we're married. I believe heavily in my own energy function, you know, interacting um, with hers. And since you, there's a lot of emphasis on the sacral chakra, and it's interesting because I have been doing some study along those lines with myself recently. And so what I was trying to ask is, as far as herbs, you know, is there any way besides, like, teas that a person can maybe have an essential, um, I don't know how to to, to mm-hmm. articulate it, maybe just like an ingestion of that, that energy, even if it's, like, subconscious not to harm them because a person might know that, you know, you need this, so you're kind of hard-headed. So the only way to get it to you might be to do some kind of slick shit, but it's not to be harmful. So what is mm-hmm. like something? And being that you're a female, I haven't heard a lot of a lot of sisters up on here lately, other than the one earlier, uh, be- beginning in the summer that was talking about some super technology with uh, uh, medicine with herbs. And I forget my notes on that now. But I'm just asking, as it's uh, present in my mind, what can mm-hmm. be done like in a simple, practical way with something you might just see like in a Walmart or something that you don't have to go to great lengths for. Well, you don't have to go to great lengths. One of the places I like to buy my herbs in bulk, um, unfortunately, it's not black-owned, um, but it's a uh, Mountain Rose Herbs where you can buy uh, your teas um, or herbs in bulk. Um, one of the herbs that works very well for the uh, woman's rep- reproductive organ is raspberry tea. Okay. Um, I, if it's convincing enough, I would recommend a fruit diet, um, if possible, um, consisting of raspberries, uh, oranges, strawberries, um, even, uh, you have to get your hands on some moringa, uh, moringa, um, but definitely get you a big bulk of raspberry tea. It's not something that you can just, like, slip into a meal or <laughs> slip into a drink. <laughs> but it something has that's a practical, real, you know. It is practical. You know, it's it, it's practical because, you know, it's healthy. And um, health is really uh, important. So well, what raspberry. Does that, what, mm-hmm. I'm sorry. No, I was going to say, what does that do particularly for the function? Like, is that in the blood or the system? It works with the like reproductive the... system, period. It works with, uh, you know, ex- it works with clearing out the uterus of scar tissues. It works with uh, healing prolonged menses. Um, it helps to uh, release, you know, give relief to the colon. Um, it helps with all of the lower um, parts of the body as far as the the exit system and the reproductive system. Um, as I said before, when dealing with the reproductive system, you have to also take a look at the colon. If infertility is a problem, there is also a problem with the colon. If your wife isn't a person that, you know, exit on a daily basis, That's key to letting you know that there is a problem with the colon. Um, So working with one, working with the reproductive organ and not fixing the colon wouldn't help. So raspberry herb is something that helps with both of them plus the orange light. Now, Amazon, and it's another place um, online, it's called Hit Lights. And what it is, it's a S-series 9-watt, 9-watt A19 multicolor LED light bulb. And it comes with a remote control. And all you have to do is plug it into a lamp in your house in a smaller room, not a too big of a room, but maybe a bathroom is big enough. And she would sit in that room under that orange light for at least 15 minutes a day until she starts noticing that her, I would say at tops, one month, 
until she starts noticing that she's moving her bowels more frequently daily, daily. And um, also getting those fruits into her system, mangoes, raspberries, strawberries. Get the raspberry leaf tea, and you'll definitely see improvement in her body. And that should also promote, you know, fertility. Okay, now, okay, now, I'm not trying to hold on the phone, man, because you're getting deep on me, and there's some things I don't want to get really personal on the airwaves, so I don't know if there's maybe something I could ask uh, off the waves for about five minutes after the show's done. No problem. Okay. No problem. I appreciate that a lot. All right. Okay. All right. We're going to go to area code 770. Area code 770, you're on the line. Hi, greetings. Greetings. Hi. Greetings. Greetings, goddess. Um, I was calling. I had a, a couple of questions. Uh, one of my questions was, um, I heard in the show that you said if anyone was suffering with asthma, you can use, mm-hmm. uh, I think it was coconut oil in the sun with a certain kind of light for 15 mm-hmm. days. I missed, I kind of missed out on it. My son has asthma, and I'm, he always suffer with asthma around the, um, the winter time, and I want to prepare myself just in case it comes again. Mm-hmm. That was mm-hmm. one. Um, another question, I, I try to pick up on uh, the man that just called in about his wife suffering with um, the reproductive system, which I also have problems with that also. And you were mentioning a different a different light that you can get, and I was mm-hmm. wondering about that light and the certain colors for uh, Libra, Sagittarius, and uh, the, the, uh, for the days of the week that you can wear. Okay, so let's start off with the last question. Uh, Libra, Sagittarius. <laughs> And uh, let's see, Libra is cream or off-white for Fridays. Oh, for Friday. Friday. Sagittarius, you said? Mm, uh Uh-huh. Yellow every Thursday. Yellow every Thursday. Thank you on that one. And what was the other one? Um, uh, you You were explaining about asthma. Yeah, asthma and um you take okay. well, coconut water a coconut mm-hmm. oil and um and you put it in a light. Right. Solarized honey. And that's for we'll breathing element. Okay, you have to make that. You'll have to make that. And it can be done, you know, during any season. You can get yourself a gold top mason jar. Uh, at least a pint, a pint. Go with a pint. Get you some honey from your local area, mm-hmm. not from another area, because when you purchase honey, you have to purchase honey that's from your area because the bees are used to the environment. Okay. So nature pretty much knows what you're dealing with. Okay. And so you have to buy local honey. And so you will put that honey in a jar, you know, see if you can get you a couple bottles of local grade A honey, and you put that in your mason jar, or and you sit it out on a ledge where the sun hits it directly if you can. Try to get it directly into the sun. And you make now, sure that... Do you all day, or... All day. Okay. All day. Now, each day, you have to clean off this jar... You can't allow, you can take a, not a wet cloth, but a damp cloth, really close to dry. And you would sit that, you know, on a ledge directly in the sun if possible for 25 to 30 days. Okay, and this will turn into a medicine for any type of breathing ailment. Okay. Okay. And you use the okay. same honey, just put it back in the drawer after cleaning it. Once you once you sit it out there for right okay okay now I get your question. 
You're not taking it off the ledge. You're just going to pick it up, wipe it off with a damp cloth, and sit it back down. Oh, but keep track okay. of the days. Right. Just keep track of the days. If you have to mark your calendar for when you start and mark it for when you end it. The, okay. the least amount of days you can keep that honey out there under the sun is 25. The most is 30. Okay. Now, what's okay. the difference between the sunlight and the moonlight? The difference between the sunlight and the moonlight is the different elements that it helps to to heal. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, both deal with, you know, human oh. systems. Uh, the sun pretty much the sun pretty much is that electrical um the electrical rays it's a different prism of lights being emitted from the moonlight oh okay 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 um the moonlight is like a uh, see sunlight is electric moonlight is more thermal. And that's kind of a difference. Like, sunlight is, uh, even though it's warm, it's more electric than anything else. And my phone is going off. Okay, so let me see. It just treats different ailments. But with the honey being out there, it's being energized by both rays. Okay. Okay, but the sun is more potent. Got it? Mm -hmm, I got it. All right. Now, once I do, once it's set out for anywhere from 20 to 30 days, how often should they take that? Daily. Daily until it's you out. Give it, yes. Okay. Just one tablespoon, one teaspoon. Sorry, not tablespoon. One teaspoon. How old is the child? Four. Okay, half a teaspoon. Half a teaspoon. Okay. Mhm. Okay. Half a My next on. question was, um, you were mentioning about a light, about the reproduction system that you can mm-hmm. purchase. Yes. The hit lights. Um, they can be found on Amazon dot com as well. Uh they are multicolor what is it on Amazon? Multicolor LED lights and you'll know them when you see it because it comes with a remote control that has about 16, 16 different colors on the remote, which are the different, oh. right. Um, hitlights.com um, is another website you can go to, and that one has the S-Series 9-Watt 819 Multicolor LED Light Bulb. And what you're looking for, it's a light bulb. Some of them, they look different from the typical light bulb that you would put in your home. Um, some of them have like a silver uh, bottom coating right after the copper that you would twist into the con- the uh, wall connector. Okay. Okay. And pretty much the remote control gives it away because it has okay. 16 and different you lights. Each different light for like maybe like depression or whatever you may be suffering through at that current time. Mm-hmm, exactly. And you said also when you do that to sit in a dark room? Yes. The room has to be pitch black, and the only light you should be receiving is the light being projected from that light bulb. Okay. Would you recommend to use that while you're sleeping? You can, but, I mean, either way, it's going to treat you, but it's not going to speed up anything if you do it overnight. Um, It's not really recommended to have the light bulb on um, overnight because there are still some studies uh, that shows that you have to be careful of LED lights. All light is radiation, just keep that in mind. Not saying that you're going to be, you know, subjected to a harmful radiation but our eyes the retina of our eyes are really sensitive and so when you use these and I forgot to mention this thank you for asking that um, question is that you should wear those have you ever been to like a sauna or you know on television possibly you may have seen someone with those little goggles that they wear when they get in the suntan oh yeah uh uh-huh 
Okay. That can work or either one of those sleep masks that's jet black and you put it over your eyes. Okay, are you talking about the same glasses like you could perch um you could purchase them from the eye store? I mean, not the eye store. Um like when people go get their eyes checked and after being under so much light, they give you the glasses. So when you go out into the sun, it won't harm your eyes. Yeah, you can use them too. You can okay. use them too or you can get the um the little cheap $2 uh sleeping mask. That you oh, okay. just use over your eyes. Okay. 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 So if you do happen to fall in, fall asleep while treating yourself with the multi light bulb, your eyes are protected. Now, how long would you recommend that you be underneath this light? Fifteen minutes. Fifteen minutes. Uh, daily. Daily. Okay. daily. Mhm. And you can do fifteen minutes. You know, as many times a day as you want with different colors. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, so, how I'm many sure colors? I, you can use as many colors you want a day. I would. It depends on what you're treating. If, oh, okay. in fact, you need more help with this later, I can help you. My uh, Facebook page is Avaricia Ifatumasi Rennet, and I'll definitely help you with that. If you don't want to discuss it online, I can. You know, you can inbox me there. Okay. And I can um, help how do you, you with spell that. your Facebook name? A B O R I S H A. A B O R I S A. H A. Oh, H A. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. And Ifatumasi is I F A T U. I S. Can you spell, say that over? I F A. Like Efa? I F A. Yeah, like uh-huh. Efa. Uh huh. I F A T U N. As in Nancy. M as in mother. I S E. Okay. Okay, I got it. Is all your okay. information on your uh, Facebook too? Yeah, my information is right below this, uh, like right above the chat on uh, Blog Talk Radio for this broadcast. And so if you can't find me, you can double check back and see how I have everything spelled. I'm easy to find. Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. All right. Code 3. One three area code three one three. You on the greetings, 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 greetings. Peace, God. What's going on? Um, I wanted to ask our guest. Um, was there? You were talking about the uh, wearing the different colors. Um, is there is there color combinations that you would suggest staying away from? Like um. Not necessarily. Um, People argue the different color combinations, but as I stated before, violet, indigo, and blue light are similar. Uh, Mm -hmm. Green can be used alone. Yellow, orange, and red are part of the, you know, and similar are part of the same color spectrum. Um, So the mixing of the colors, a lot of people are... uh, Pioneers of the European European uh, They pretty much have some disputes Pertaining to what colors you shouldn't mix When doing the color therapy But right. using If you use the S-Series 9 It's going to be hard to mix You can only use one at a time anyway um, oh. If you're going to If you're going to Say for instance you're treating Uh a person with it's really it's not as hard as it seems. It's really not that hard. Because <laughs> most of these colors except for green are within the same color spectrum. So you'll right. even if you're not working um to to heal one area that needs healing because you don't know it needs healing, if you're working right. with red and you truly need orange, 
you'll still receive some healing from using red. Right. You right. see what I'm saying? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I was just I just I guess I was just really asking because I know when you deal with even with crystals, there are certain um crystals that, you know, uh you really don't want to have in combo cuz they kind of clash. So True. I just wanted to know you kind of wrong the same with the uh, type of therapy, so Okay, and that is true with crystals, um, but crystals are different because they're uh, they're manifested colors, Me- meaning like even though we're bodies of light, we're still man we're light manifest. Um, oh. We're solid, or some we think we're solid, or whatever have you, <laughs> however you want to look at it, but. Right. Crystals react a little more differently because of the fact that they're um, considered solids. Um, Mm. Color is not a solid. Um, There are colors that we pretty much have not been able to see because of we haven't because we haven't yet evolved to seeing these other other colors. Um, So yeah, with dealing with 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 crystals particularly, um, just follow the which, what's the name of that book? Um, I think it's called the Crystal Bible or Crystal Healing. One of those books really gets into like the different tinctures and stuff like that you can make um, when working with crystals to get the same thing I was talking about as far as like blue water, yellow water. Um, you would just put a crystal of like let's say a, a lapis lazuli. Um, in a bottle of clear water, um, preferably a, a glass, not a plastic bottle. Right. And uh, you would sit that out in the sun, and you would let you would let that that crystal infuse the water to let out you know the properties, so that you can right. it'll be like an elixir. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's how crystals work. Um, so yeah, I get what you're saying. But yeah, just follow, you know, you can use that base as far as the sun or the moonlight to get healing from crystal water elixirs. That's good stuff. And uh lastly, do you can you go like a little bit into the I guess the science and um the uh astrological um well, I, I know, like, cause, like I'm a Leo. You mentioned Leo would be wearing, I think you said, orange and gold on Sunday. So can you mm-hmm. kind of go into the science behind that exactly? Or Okay. <clears throat> now, every – I would assume that uh, – do you know a little bit about astrology? Yeah, a little bit. I need to I'm, – I'm trying – Dive a little bit, a lot deeper. Into okay. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Well, you know that the the ruler planet for Leo is the sun. Right. Yeah. And that the the element for the Leo is fire. Right. Um, which colors would you best describe, <laughs> or what color would you prescribe for a Leo? Uh. <laughs> no, no, no. It no, it rings. <laughs> It rings perfectly for me, but I'm just like I'm oh. I'm looking at the signs and I'm like, hmm, okay, you know. But that one obviously <laughs> that one makes well. Clear. Leos are really uh, Leos are like that charismatic. I mean, let me tell you something. I'm a Capricorn, and mm-hmm. Leos and Capricorns hardly even like. I just started meeting Capricorns or either acknowledging. Um, not even Capricorns, Leos. I just started acknowledging Leos. Like, I met like four <laughs> Leos over the past month or so, and I just realized how magnetic they are. They mm-hmm. have this charisma about them that is like really um, fascinating. Mm-hmm. And their their desire for luxury and everything good in life is a turn on for Capricorns. Okay, so. Mm-hmm. Leos pretty much are like being ruled by the sun um, puts you in a position of 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 being that charismatic leader, um, 
that person that attracts more frequently right. than the, any other sign, um, that has a little more swagger than other signs, including more swagger than a Virgo. Hmm. Um, right. So the color orange, uh, that color orange or gold hmm. is that color that you would wear on Sundays. Um, so it will be orange or gold on every Sunday because Sunday is your cosmic day. Right. Okay. Um, and it energizes you as well. So, mm. and because you're melanated, you get that extra, you get that extra, uh, you get just, you just get extra. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I could have a great night. I appreciate it. No problem. Thank you. Okay. Wow, this is good. <laughs> oh, yeah. Another one, another one. 850, 850, you are now online. Um, greetings, brothers and sisters. Greetings. Greetings. I, greetings. I had a question. Yeah, quick question for the sister. Um, I was trying to go back over um the therapy benefits you said for the color purple. You said people because were lacking well the independence or something. You were saying um they experienced like well you said epilepsy or dementia or something like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I was trying to get well more of you were saying about the color purples. Okay, it must be resonating with you a little bit. Yeah, okay. because I was going to yeah, say that, yeah, I've been experiencing, like, let me say epilepsy for, like, what, 10 years now. And the thing about it is, and you're saying, um, you said, my whole room is surrounded in nothing but purple. Well, yeah, it's my mm-hmm. favorite color, actually. But I was trying to get what you were saying about it, you yeah, know, and the benefits, you know, for it. Mm-hmm. Okay, so at this time, because you are physically treating yourself with um, with the color purple, you need to now spiritually treat yourself to help you help you with the epilepsy using the the multi LED light bulb. Mm-hmm. Um, give me one second. Let me. <coughs> I'm sorry. I get allergies for some reason. My ears itch and all of that. And to tell you the truth, I need more vegetables. So um, I got the cough right now. But uh, I would say you need the – where is that bulb? Am I logged into the chat room now? Is the chat room closed? No, it's open. I wanted to put a link in here. Okay, I need to put a link. It is uh, hitlights.com. The hitlights? Yeah, hitlights.com. Mm-hmm. One second. And then you will put forward slash 9 watt A19 multicolor. You can halfway do it like that and see what you get. Because you you already are resonating with that color, which means your asking your spirit is speaking and saying you need healing. So I would just recommend that you get that um, that S series nine light bulb and start healing with that. Hey, you need a really dark room. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. Hitlights.com. Uh huh. You said. Well, what else new? Slash? Uh, four slash S series nine. Let me let me try it. Give me one second. I'll get you. I got you. Uh, I got to pull up this chat room because it's easier to just put it in chat as opposed to um, it's a really long address I have here for this uh, specific item. Um, I'll put it down here because for some reason the chat room isn't open 
on my page, but it could be because I have, um, I didn't log out of my work program. So let me see. All right, I put it in the comments underneath this broadcast. You'll be able to see that and go right there after the show. Because yeah. well, uh, Dr. Eileen, he was telling me about the B6 and B12, yeah, again. And so, yeah, mm-hmm. well, I started well, eating a lot well, more fish because, you know, yeah, I don't do really, I'm not really heavy on meat. So I've been eating like more well, fish. And I've known that um, even though the tuna, they were saying, well, I had, High traces of mercury is said due to high levels of selenium were well, in the tuna well, in the fish. Um, you know that uh, the selenium it uh, it doesn't. Yeah, I guess the mercury toxicity. Yeah, it doesn't really have an effect due to the um, high levels of selenium. And it was saying once you eat it, well, you also attain that selenium. And I was thinking it might well. Do the same thing that it does for the fish that it does for well people. Oh well, okay. Are you talking about healing through your foods again? As far as like yeah. the selenium that you get from foods to treat the high levels of mercury that you have in your body, is that what you're saying? Yeah, I was um, given advice by Doctor Aline. Well, he was saying that well for epilepsy, okay. you got more traces of yeah B12 and B6. So that's why I was trying B12 to get B12 and B6 through. are excellent for for black women. Yeah. But he because was yeah, we, also telling me, yeah, about I agree. Yeah, that would help the epilepsy. Mhm. Yeah, yeah, not it, only will also, it Mhm. Go ahead. So it was also kind of interesting too about you know, saying, you know, the color brown, yeah, and I heard yeah, brother Fahim he was talking about yeah, how, well, he was also kind of drawn to the color brown, well, little as well, and I was thinking the same thing because I like earth tone colors. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. You were saying, uh, was it color brown? When it was yeah, that so, um, we need to do something, yeah. Well, yeah, something, but there's someone that's probably standing up, well, I guess, from keep us, like, keeping us from doing what we need to do, right? Or, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. So that was kind of interesting to me as well. Yeah. See, a lot of times we're a lot of times we we don't have that support we need to progress in the areas in life where we're supposed to be excelling. Um sometimes it's just a lack of overall support that can be oppressive. And um so that color brown you know, uh, that color brown pretty much manifests itself as uh, it expresses, you express yourself through the color brown. Yeah, I was thinking um, maybe top back then, too, you know, mm-hmm, with mm-hmm. epilepsy and everything, being how I wasn't, like, able to do what I was wanting to do or willing, uh, needed to do because I was mm-hmm. put in a situation where I couldn't, like, be able to uh, go out on my own. I had to rely on somebody like transportation wire. Mhm, mhm. And so you kind of, you know, curled up, and so yeah. you you internalized a lot of hurt. Or what's what you say your sign is again? I'm I'm a Scorpio. That's oh. my birthday. Just passed. You're on the twenty third. That eclipse that happened. The second eclipse. Mm. Happy birthday. Uh-huh. Y'all are uh-huh. going through happy it birthday. right now. Yeah. And, yeah, happy belated birthday. But just know that Scorpios will have their release come December 23rd. Um, it's, you know, um, Scorpios are going through it. Uh, Libras are going through it right now, mainly because they're the signs that were mostly affected by the um, lunar and solar eclipse that, Pretty, the lunar eclipse was like opened up with a with the um, Mercury in retrograde, so y'all had really a, a bad time. It's like two months. It's going to be two months of agony, <laughs> you know. Mm-hmm. But just know that relief comes. There is light at the end of the tunnel. It's not going to last forever, mm-hmm. you know. 
Um, just hold tight. Don't give in. You know, um, you'll be you'll be going you know through some stuff, but you'll be all right. And it's funny you know, that because, you said that as well. Yeah. yeah. Scorpio season is coming. Happy. Yeah, because I'm kind of having, well, opening up a relationship, possible relationship with this well, my male. He's a Libra, and but we're not, we're kind of meeting on the same page, and he's into the knowledge, but we're not kind of grasping where we need to be uh, uh, as far as that goes. I don't mm-hmm. want to get too personal. I get you. I get you. But, you know, like I said, that relief is coming. It's coming December 23rd. Um, you'll You'll see some relief. And, you know, um, y'all have been on the hot seat for, since 2012, actually, um, because Saturn has put a demand to face heavy emotional and psychological truths and lessons. Not to mention that, the, you know, like I said, the eclipse in Scorpio Taurus, that was like the axis, which began November 13, 2012, and then it concluded with October 23, 2014. You know, and that's when we have the the lunar full eclipse. So y'all have y'all have had y'all's time of just going through it. My sister's a Scorpio, and I'm watching her go through it. I'm talking her through it and letting her know that she's going to be okay. And she's um, supposed to be graduating uh, from college with her bachelor's in May. And she's like at the break. You know, she's at her. She's she's almost there though. She's almost there, and that's what I'm telling you. You're almost there. You only have one more month to go before you start having those energies for change. Um, and hopefully, whatever it is you're going through, heavy emotions and any, you know, lessons that this, um, since 2012, uh, and especially since October 23rd, 2014, this year, any lessons that have been brought up to you, it is best and it is pertinent to your growth spiritually to take heed to these lessons because that's what's going to determine whether or not December 23rd, 2014, is actually going to be a time of relief for you. Okay. Okay? Yeah. All right. I got you. I mean, well, can I get one more word in? <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> okay. Yeah, because yeah, I've been listening to, yeah, the Dr. Lehman, yeah, he was talking about um, the colors as well, like well, past week ago. He was talking about doing, um, combating the, um, what was it, the, you said the lunar eclipse that happened on the 8th with yeah, I mean, the candle eight. magic and exactly. everything, yeah, the colors for right. the candles. Mm-hmm. And so I was doing that. I was on that, you know, to doing that before the 23rd as well. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, that was... What am I confusing here? Because it was just a lot that just went on. It was the solar eclipse on October 23rd. It was October 8th for the lunar eclipse. And then uh, at the same time, it was Mercury retrograde um, that we started off with, with the lunar eclipse. It was just like boom, boom, boom. Um, I've never seen nothing like it in my life since I've been paying attention to astrology. Um, But... uh, what was your question again? Because this is fascinating. It's fascinating because Scorpios, I admire Scorpios um, because of the fact that you guys have a lot of passion. Um, you look forward to business success and things like that. Um, even though you have, you, have, you have personal demons, a lot of times you deal with a lot of jealousy and things like that, but you have to learn how to transmute that energy so that you can have the relationship that you truly deserve. Okay, yeah. and it's it's you know that fear and and intimate intimate the intim, intimacy. I'm tripping over my words because I'm kind of hype right now, but fear and intimacy does not go hand in hand. It will prevent you from progressing with your Libra friend. So you have to knock down those emotional blocks. Right. And you know, um, with Saturn being in the play with all of this, it's like, woo confrontation so you don't you know you want to face whatever demons you have in this process by December 23rd write down some of the things that you have noticed taking place in your life that you felt were life lessons 
and see if you have tackled them, even if it hurts. And it's mostly the the um, the flashbacks from past situations that hurt the most that you want to put in the back of your mind. Then again, we're talking about brown and purple because that's where the dementia comes in at. You get forgetful and you want to not remember. But this is the time to remember and reflect, write down what it is you feel as though your lessons were, and deal with them, face them head on before December 23rd. Okay. Okay. All right. Thanks, sister. You're welcome. Thank you. Yeah, I would like to know also, call. is this Shay? I don't know. It's uh, oh. he's a head head loose. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, from Pennsylvania, Florida. Gotcha. All right. Are you looking for a new job right now? Um, well, actually, I'm getting into well selling more well natural products, but I'm a massage therapist. Mhm. Okay. And that's what you're looking to make your your own personal business, expanding on that. Uh huh. Okay. Don't let go. Keep pushing forward. Mm-hmm. All right. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. All right. Let's go back to the phone line. Appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we got another call here. We got every four one zero four one zero. Hello, family. Peace, 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 God. peace, peace, family, peace, goddesses and gods. Um, yeah, greetings. I felt like I had uh, to chime in for a little bit uh, about the um, the Mercury retrograde. I guess a, a little bit of a, like a, a testimony for for some of the listeners out there that may be on a defense about the authenticity of astrology. Um, I think it was about what, what was it, the eighth Mercury retrograde hit, and mm-hmm. um, my uh, one of my family members is Sagittarius. She takes a a work route. Um, it's about like 20 minutes maybe, you know, for the last eight years, 20-minute ride. Um, bam, as soon as that Mercury retrograde hit, that, that, that turned into a two-hour and 50-minute ride because it was some type of um, backup in the traffic. And mm-hmm. it, it was like no explanation. We looked on the news and everything, no explanation. Um, you know, of course, uh, Mercury controls uh, communication, short travels, and uh you know, uh, deliveries. Mm-hmm. So I ordered some herbs. Okay. The um, the herbs took like three weeks from from these people. It took like three weeks to get delivered. I wasn't tripping. I was like, you know, it's expected. Then my aunt, who was a Gemini, she um, we was over to um, grandma's house. She was walking from the um the kitchen. Tripped over the phone line, boom, bust the grill over the um, you know, on the floor or whatever. Wow. And and I, I, cause I couldn't figure that one, and I was like, you know, only thing I could figure out that was probably Mercury retrograde, and um, mm-hmm. I mean, I, I didn't want to attribute everything to it, but I think that that was Mercury retrograde in that situation, and yeah. Um, but to the gist of um. My call, you, you, sister, you mentioned about the uh, Sagittarius, the colors. Like this is not just the, you know, for the sake, the sake of uh, quibbling or anything, but uh, I'm sure you heard the astrology book. It's like a big blue book, um, the only astrology book you ever need, something, something like that. Um, I, I actually got mine from Llewellyn. Um. I think it's called Everyday Astrology. I also have a mentor because I couldn't grasp it when I first started um, years ago. So sometimes I, you know, 
um, I have to give credit to my mentor for helping me to understand it because reading it from a book was totally strange. But go ahead. Yeah, you're not lying about that. Um, but because my my thing is on here, she has she has. Um, sorry, go ahead, brother. Oh, no, no, I think he's talking to somebody in his house. Okay. Um, <clears throat> it says the color purple. It, uh, like the sister just finished talking um, Scorpio, just finished mm-hmm. talking about the uh, color purple. It says the purple is the color for Sagittarius, and uh, you mentioned the beige, and mm-hmm. it, it's like some some ambivalence for me because you know going to um, you know books such as uh, what Doctor Later Africa got. He mm-hmm. mentions different colors for the uh, the, sh- the chakras, and other mm-hmm. books they mention other colors, and I- I'm like, is this the European influence in here? Or, I mean, you know, who who do I lean towards mm-hmm. more? Mm-hmm. So if you get clear, okay. Mm-hmm. Well, um, yellow is a balancing color. Okay. Um, let's see, I gotta grab my book. There are different colors for the zodiac signs, such as uh the color of the zodiac candles um oh. and and most if not all, yeah, all of the zodiacs have more than one color that resonates with them, like I'm a Capricorn, but black and brown resonate with me. Um, and black and brown can be my zodiac color candles. Um, <laughs> it does depend on who writes the book and their understanding of uh, the zodiac and color coordination. But I'll tell you this, who I trust is what resonates with me. Um, because of the fact that if you ever saw me, my basic colors, are black or brown, mm. and I'm asked not to wear by the you know by my spirit guides. I'm asked not to wear those colors so often, but I'm so used to those colors now because they're simpler for me, except for days where I'm not uh, feeling black or brown. I will wear lavender or red, but my wardrobe is full. Of black and brown Mm. All of my shoes Are black and brown So before I came into astrology This was something about me that I knew Another color that I wear And another color that makes me feel really good Are different colors of green Color resonates with different emotions And different responses Colors resonate with everybody. The key is finding out why the color resonates with you the way it resonates with you. Now, with yellow being, uh, what sign are you again? We were uh, boy, I'm, being... I'm your 180 reflection. Okay, so your... <laughs> Excuse me. Um, we were talking about. Give me one second. Sagittarius, right? Yeah, no, nah, that yeah, that's my um, that's, that's one of my family members. But I'm a uh, Cancer on the cusp okay. of uh, with the Leo, like the other brother. Okay. Well, Cancers, they love white. Rather be white shoes. You own a pair of white shoes? Um. I got some beige. Uh, I was some maybe my color, maybe my energy was off. But I used to stay rock and brown. They they actually called me Charlie Brown. <laughs> okay. Like, away. <laughs> All right. Well, you're a basic cancer, not a basic as in like lame. Basic as in you stick to what's safe. Um, and it's it's men are a little different with colors than women are. We're a little more, you know, not so. Um, safe with our colors We tend to experiment a little more But I know cancers 
and they're in my family that have white shoes. Most of them, sea green, as a matter of fact, is a color that's, um, it's a color shade above brown. Um, mm -hmm. It's a earth tone. It's a, it's a, who's that? Okay. It's an earth tone color. Um, light blue is also a color that cancers may like. Um, if you can hold one second, I'll go grab my book, and I'll tell you which book it is. You want to hold on? Oh, no problem. Okay, hold on. Yeah, they they used to call um, call me Charlie Brown because I had some Nike boots that was brown. Some oh. um, back in the day, what uh, uh, what, what them boots called um, caterpillars. Oh, okay. <laughs> when, 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 when you was when you was forced to wear caterpillars to uh, middle school or whatever, that was brown. Uh, um, okay. Yeah, a whole bunch of brown. All right, so let's see. Cancer, cancer. The name of this book is Complete Book of Astrology, The Easy Way to Learn Astrology. Um, Chris Brandt Risk. I think that's his name. How you say it? Okay. You done had me run up the steps. <laughs> <laughs> that is okay Okay, so cancer, cancer, cancer mm -hmm. Oh, and if I could just interject real fast um, I've been Go meaning ahead. to wear more green Um, Like, for the, I never really got a chance to wear green I mean, I know that sounds silly, but I always wanted to wear more green for some reason. Mm -hmm. It's okay. like I, I've been I've been stuck on uh, James Brown for the longest time, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and it happens. I'm stuck on the Browns too because it's it's safe and it pretty much goes with anything. Um, but cancers, according to this book and my studies, their main colors are silver and white. Yeah, I, I got that from the uh, ocean, uh, silver, mm -hmm. silver lining. Yep. So, yeah, you're not, I mean, brown is a color that you can definitely wear, but your main colors that make you feel good are white and silver. It's just something about, it, it's mainly because of the moon being your ruling planet. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Okay, so try, yeah. you know, this summer coming up, get you some white shoes for Labor Day. <laughs> <laughs> See how it makes you feel. You'll be, um, you won't be James Brown. You might be, uh, what's that brother name? Chuck Berry, somebody. Chuck Berry. Mm-hmm, uh, with them white shoes on. <laughs> uh, so, the, um, um, go ahead. I, I, I'd be uh, hit a little synchronicity for you. Um, my uh, birth name Jerome, and I'd be Jerome off of Martin. Look at the white shoes. Look at the white shoes. Oh, how about that? <laughs> <laughs> I said Jerome's in the house. <laughs> yeah, but but, yeah. Um, but look, that total it was a total lunar eclipse that occurred, and it was like 15 degrees of Aries, um, and it pretty much it was like that. It was like the fourth total lunar eclipse that I've researched. So let me see. The last one we had one in April. Um, and basically, basically what those lunar eclipses are is for you to focus on yourself. Okay. Libras, it, we was pretty much in that Libra zone at that time. So it was a focus on partnerships, relationships, romance, things of that nature. But this particular was, lunar eclipse was like really explosive because it was in conjunct with Uranus. And that that's was, that planet uh, that. Mm hmm. And no, no, no. Yeah, you wait, 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 wait. I'm confused. Uh, 
Oh, my bad. I, I... Okay, yeah, because you're confusing me now. Don't throw on no more dates because I'll get knocked oh. off the square. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of numbers. I had to calculate, okay? But Uranus is that planet of upheaval, disruption, this chaos. But it's also that planet of enlightenment. So because Aries was in conjunct with that, with that planet Uranus, it was throwing a lot of people off guard. You know, and Mercury retrograde deals with um, transportation. Uh, it deals with, whew, it dealt with my computer, something. Yes. Something ugly. You yes. know, because I had a hard time. I couldn't even make money for like two weeks during the Mercury retrograde. But it just gave me more time to focus on my agenda, which I wasn't impacted heavily too much because of the fact that it didn't really hit base with my, my sign. Um, but it, it did hit me hard in a, in a career and partnerships um, category. But with it being, in, it was, that Mercury was also like, it was retrograde in Scorpio. So people were dealing with a lot of dark and uh, dismal energies that was pulling stuff out of the closet on people close to them. And um, a lot of scandalous stuff was just happening. Unbelievable. I don't think I had a night's rest, really, because I had neighbors outside in chaos. Hmm. I'm talking grown women in the street fighting, pulling hair, acting a fool, you know. Hmm. And um, it's just, you know, when you looked at the media, you had the guy from Seventh Heaven who was recorded um, in therapy, in a therapy session, where he had admitted to molesting three young girls. And this was during that Mercury retrograde in Scorpio because Scorpios are secretive people. And when Mercury was in retrograde, it pretty much was uncovering, along with that Uranus energy of upheavals. It was shaking people's lives that were keeping things hidden for a long time, no matter which level of, uh, you know, scandalous it was on or what level of... um, you know, you need to address me right now (laughs) type thing. It was on. So, yeah, this Mercury retrograde, I have never seen any of them like this ever, like, in my life before, ever. So I agree. When it comes to astrology, at one time I wasn't, I can't even say that I wasn't a believer because I was a person at the age of 12 that read the horoscopes in the newspaper. So I can't say that I was ever a disbeliever, but um, I had, I just had to do some fine tuning of myself and realize that everything that's written in the newspaper is not for me. And you shouldn't allow uh, horoscopes, don't allow horoscopes to um, help you to make decisions because it might not even apply to you. You know, it could be addressing someone else of your sign. And so it's not something that you want to use, a, that horoscope, put it that way. It's not something that you want to use daily. Astrology is totally different. It deals with you personally. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. Was it 180,000 uh, aspects, you know, the planets, and different um, uh, configurations, and it's all type of combinations, and the newspapers, they just covering, you know, the big old blanketed statement, statements. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. But, um, they keep it general. Um, yeah, um, yeah, and I, I know it's, it's a, a lot of uh, time been monopolized. Um, my sister, she's just really fast, my sister, she's uh, also Scorpio. And uh, since I'm, I'm of the, um, the male species, um, <laughs> I was curious about... The uh, the menstruation and is it um I, I looked this term up uh, I think a year ago but I forgot what it was called or what they calling it now um when the menses is you know is it is it natural for 
a woman to not have menses, or is that something that our modern um, women are going through? And you know, for the African, is is that uh, normal? You're or, talking yeah. about uh, pre. Uh, you're talking about pre. Um, pre. What is it called when a woman is past fifty and they go into premenopause, premenopausal? Uh, the other term, uh, without I think it's something like a menstrual or what is it? I know it's in Latin. In Latin, it is a is without. Hmm. And mm-hmm. menses is, you know, the menstrual. I'm trying to uh, think of a diagnosis or the Latin Greek term for it. But anyway, is it normal? How old is the lady? Um, uh, um sister, she about thirty. Uh, oh, her birthday just just passed. Um. 36 uh, now Okay And she's been like this for a while Um Has she been well, like um, Has she had a partial hysterectomy Oh that's right Right um You, you already know the um, The reputation with Scorpio Is the reproductive uh, mm-hmm. Area So she had some um, You know not throwing a business out there But uh, cystic mm-hmm. fibroids and um uh okay. yeah, the fibroid it, surgery. Okay. And the term amenorrhea. Yeah, yeah, that that's is, exactly. Right. Right. Amenorrhea. Like, hey. She basically um the problem with hysterectomies is that they're false. The issues with the uterus can be treated. The uterus can be healed. The uterus can repair itself. It can grow back its organs. Say if a woman has a tubal ligation, um, she is able to regrow, regenerate. The problem is that the science isn't developable. Um, it's not popular, even though it can be found in in textbooks or and other scholarly work. Um, so it, it's hard to treat women in, with Western medicine and expect them to function properly afterwards. Mm. So premenopause sets in or amenorrhea sets in because of uh, the deficiency um, or the lack thereof. Of, of of a fully functioning uterus And I wouldn't say that The, the uterus becomes You know um, Any type of uh, uh, Atrophy sets in Or anything like that I would just say that um, Sadness does Come over The reproductive glands Or the reproductive organs Okay, and that is a sickness of itself, which can still be treated with the orange LED lights. Hmm. Um, So, yeah, I would definitely look into that to help repair the womb and to offset premenopause. Um, Amenorrhea, she might be happy about that. (laughs) She may be happy about not having a menstrual cycle, but, you know, (laughs) just to get everything back tick-top, you know, shaped so that she can feel, you know, her womanhood or uh, because a lot of women, you know, they'll say, you know, I don't, it doesn't make you feel less of a woman because you don't have a uterus and stuff like that. It's just that they have to deal with the fact that they don't have a uterus that works and not saying that to cause harm or take away someone's healing process. Um, It's just that um, 
some cases are severe and some cases are not that severe and can still be healed, as opposed to a woman that has uh, no uterus at all due to a hysterectomy, a full hysterectomy. Because she had a partial hysterectomy, you know, she can still get her uterus back happy and healthy. Just because they removed half of it or partial bits of it doesn't mean that it's healed. Because uh, cause I was under the impression that um, she had um, a fibroid, so I'm, I'm completely ignorant of this process, but they just removed the mucus, right? You know, that's that's basically what it is, the um, no. heart and mucus. Uh, fibroids are more than just heart and mucus. Uh, fibroids can be teeth, hair, a little bit of bone. Um, fibroids can be fat. It can be waste from the bowel system, from the um, colons. See, because when the when the colon isn't, fibroid tumors can be a baby that never got a chance to grow. And fibroid oh. tumors can be, right, fibroid tumors can also be a packet or a pack inside the uterus for waste that cannot exit itself from the colon. Mm-hmm. And so yep. the waste, the uterus becomes a dumping space for the colon when it's not able to exit the body. It'll mm-hmm. find other means to exit. Okay, I appreciate it, sister, um, because, I mean, I try to get her to go vegan three years ago or whatever, but, you know, you can't force somebody to, um, you can't force somebody to fix themselves. They got to they gotta fix themselves. Exactly. That's true. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. true. Well, I appreciate you, you know, talking to us about the situation, and um, at least other people are hearing, and they can get the message eventually, you know, just just let it go, you know, and, uh, and see what happens once you let it go. Because once you once you think of something, you have to you have to put it out there and just let it happen. You can't force it. It's like when you try and manifest something, you know, doing some vision or visionary magic or something. Mm-hmm. You have to put it out there and leave it alone. Let the universe start working with it. The minute you try to push the river, the river is going to push back. So mm-hmm. don't push the river. Put it out there. Gotcha. Let the universe work with you. All right. All right, Doctor Aileen, uh, uh, brother uh, Hakeem. And what was your name? Um, the, the guest name. Abarisha. Fahim. Yeah. Okay. Oh, Fah- Fahim in uh, Abarisha. Fahim. All right, peace, family. Peace. Peace, peace God. No way. Peace. Peace. Well, why did Fahim be so quiet That's... back there? Oh, hey, hey, I, I can't do like your last um, host did to you on the show, interrupting you. I want you to go all out. So, um, exactly. <laughs> I'm saying. Thank you. <laughs> I got to let you get it all out. All right. So, um, in closing, um, what's the final comments, um, Brother Fahim? What you got to say? Uh, I'd like to say this that uh, I like to, uh, the way she explained about people looking at the newspapers for their zodiac, for their zodiac signs to find out where right. they're at because she said that mm-hmm. not necessarily mean applies to them it could be applied to someone yeah. else and uh, that, 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 that has that same sign so I, mm-hmm. I, 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 I that sheds a new light on that thank yeah. you okay you're welcome right and God is what you have to say in closing statement? Uh, well, I didn't prepare a closing statement. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, okay. I will say that you know, um, I'm glad I was you know invited to come on to your show and and give some some knowledge to your audience. I really appreciate you know the the spot the spotlight you gave me because. I've just been holding a lot of information in, and it can be a nuisance, you know. I'm not able to help people if I'm being a hermit with the knowledge. I can't, you know. Exactly. But it's right. um it's been a pleasure speaking with you, brothers. I, I listen to you guys often, 
you brought us off then and um, call in and participate sometimes. You don't know who I am, but. <laughs> All right. But I always, Appreciate you know, you give you props when I'm on the show and, and show you brothers love because, you know, I, I admire the work that y'all put in and, um, you know, what you do for your listeners. I really appreciate the positivity um, that you, that you you know, reflect. And I just, you know, want to give that back to y'all tonight by giving you much love, peace, and respect. I appreciate you guys. You got it. All right. And, um, hey, y'all heard it. I hope y'all download this. This will be in the archives as soon as the show is over. Go back and listen again because there's a lot of information. We have November the 8th, 9th. We have Black and Nobel up in Philadelphia coming up, a lecture with Dr. Ale. Um, December the 7th, we have the Men Conference in New York at the Black National Theater, as well as also, um, excuse me, not the 7th, um, December 7th, it's December Oh, hello? Oh, all right. Yes, go to the website, y'all, and check it out. Go to the website. Um, Our website, www.drlamelbay.com. And when you go there, go to the colony events. We have all the flyers there on the up-and-coming events. Um, It will be in December. That's what we do know, um, the Mellow Conference. Um, Also, we have our healing retreat, December the – what's that? Um. Yeah, so December the 7th, we have the Melanin Conference, and then the following weekend, we have, the, um, I think it's the 12th, 13th, and 14th, that following weekend, that Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, we're going to have um, our event here on the land in which we deal with the science of healing, with the different energy modalities, dealing with um, Gong, Tai Chi, Reiki, Pranic Healing, and the different... Um, Meditations and breathing and exercises and things like that. So, as well as also, you get certified um, from Hilo Wings Institute and also teach you how to have your own business, how to go out and prosper, as we say. So, hit us up at 910 364 9099. That's 910 364 9099. Also, if you want to check out the online classes, our healing classes will begin. Um, the weekend, the following weekend, after we get back from Black and Nobel, so that would be uh, the 15th, well, actually the 16th, I believe it would be Sunday, in which that we begin back to healing classes, so check us out then, for those who's interested in the healing classes, it's online classes in which that we deal with the energy modalities and various other arts, all right, so that's 910-364-9099. 